So if we're gonna, I didn't realize we were doing the gasket too, but yeah. Uh, we'll pull the head right off quick. That way we don't have any load, we'll pull the, the uh, push rods out, all that business. And then we can push the tappets up, pick the cam right out of there. And then, like I say, throw the cam up, chuck it up in the press. Heat it a little bit so that the cam will actually push out of the gear. And then we can go bake the cam gear to put on the new cam. And so what is that? Uh, this is a, an M12 lug nut you find on your regular old passenger car. I didn't bring my actual tool. I didn't realize I actually had to pull injectors today. But luckily, lukey has got a Saturn lug nut. <laughs> yeah. There's a pry bar right behind you on the motor. Right, it's literally in front of you guys. <laughs> That's why I like my tool. My tool's a, a tube that slips over top mm -hmm. <clears throat> of the injector. And then we got a rod, basically welded to a lug nut like this. Rod that comes up, you know, a piece of threaded rod. And there's a washer in it on top of the tube and just pulls it straight out by tightening the nut down. But, oh, uh, I see. You know, because basically the way we just did it, you really do run the risk of actually cracking the body. Because you're putting a lot of side pressure on it. You can actually crack it right through here, wrecking them. But I got new injectors, so it's okay. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> not everyone has that luxury. True. And sometimes your injector belt will get cranky when you send them a, a non-viable core because you're a ding-dong and broke it. <laughs> A certain order to pull out or no? Work from the ends in, and then when you take the head down, you work from the center out. Okay. Spiral. What's the? Do you know the torque spec on those? Off the top of your head? Uh, it's a uh, it's a torque angle on these, not to be confused with torque to yield. Torque angle is completely different. Um, well, not completely different, but. <clears throat> little different way of doing things anyways um, they're uh, what is it it's 30 60 89 plus 90 degrees okay and then that's based that's exactly what we end up doing with those socketed cap screws except um, ink blown off. Um, we take those down and when we do that last 90 degrees we actually also set the torque wrench for 150. So that ends up being really close. If it clicks before we hit 90 degrees, then we stop. If it hits 90 degrees before it clicks, then we stop. Um, mainly we do that simply because we don't have a tech angle torque wrench to, to measure the, um, the angle of turn when you get towards the back of the head on a second gen. You know, these back two cylinders are under the cowl. Mm -hmm. You know, and you actually have to ratchet your torque wrench. Um, and with a, with a angle gauge you can't get away with ratcheting your torque wrench it doesn't keep track of the angle so um, but when we did have access to a tech angle wrench at the other shop um, you know when you reach your angle it tells you the kind of foot pounds that it takes to reach that angle and it was 150 foot pounds plus or minus two okay. so that's why we just set it to, to 150 and like I say if it clicks before we get to 90 degrees we just leave it be and if it makes it to what we see is 90 degrees before it clicks you know, then we'll just leave it be. See how it's lifting the head up right there? Oh yeah. I didn't get that one broken loose. I didn't want to go more. If you look up here, the second one right here, that's broken loose, you'll be able to see it coming up here pretty soon. Oh yeah. See, right mm -hmm. there. Oh, this one just broke loose. Nice. That's why you do it, otherwise it lifts it up. Yep. lands in the groove. Yeah. Otherwise they will shoot up. Yeah. <laughs> They're the most inconvenient of times, you know, yeah. like when you're doing a burnout or something. Nice. 
not exactly conducive to amazing flow. No. So you just pour them all around here? More or what? Yep. Ooh. Yeah, see there's a nice, oh, nice the nasty bump there. What the fuck? Oh yeah. That's disgusting. I told you. <laughs> Let's see. Right in the lens. Right, right, right there. Can you see that? Yeah. Jesus, Martha, man. Can you see it now? Is it mostly this side that's so bad, isn't it? Oh, that's... Yeah. Why not just get rid of... Yeah. This is, this is your exhaust. Okay. This is your intake. Yep. You know, and they're, they're after swirl. And like I say, when, you, when you're talking to performance engines, swirl is a myth. It has nothing to do with anything on a direct injected diesel. What you doing there? Stop. Cleaning gaskets without uh, thingy. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Get in the head already. What are you doing there, Bolt Lady? Mm -hmm. Stuff oh. on it. Stuffs? Bolt Lady. What is it, anti seize? Lube? ARP, yeah. ARP. Oh. Fancy. So you marked each one of these so that you can go to either 150 foot pounds or not or 90 or degrees 90 first. Degrees. Yep, whichever comes first. Okay. If it cool. clicks, we stop. If it reaches 90 degrees, we stop. Yep. Easy enough. So is that on all Cummins heads or is that just a 12 valve thing or what? No, it's all Cummins heads. It's the way we install these bolts. Okay. Um, studs are a little different. Studs you can actually take down in in increments, um, you know, 500 increments all the way up to our final torque, but. This is just a, a more accurate way of doing it with bolts, simply because you got all the, the torsional loss of actually twisting the bolt to get the threads to turn, versus on a stud, that's the one benefit of a stud. You don't have to actually twist the fastener, you're only twisting the nut. So right. you don't get a bunch of, of twisting load. Okay. Um, less likely to break them, things like that. But ultimately, as far as tensile strength goes, as far as tensile strength goes, these are nearly identical to a <laughs> A 2000 series ARP. If you want to go stronger in a 12 mil, you have to go to a 60, 625 series ARP or an H11 uh, in the A1 studs. Uh, otherwise, what I prefer to do is, you know, especially if we're going through the motor completely, send it to the machine shop and we just open it up to 14 mil. And then we don't have to spend a thousand dollars on a set of studs. We can just spend again, you know, about less than 200 dollars on a set of bigger bolts that because they're beefier will actually hold more than any crazy 12 millimeter alloy could ever dream of and they're not as brittle. See how that made a nice dimple in there? You know, oh, do I that, see. Do that in a half dozen places, it ain't going anywhere. It's gotta be near the hole, not too close to it, otherwise, you actually crack it out a little bit. Oh, that's, yeah. yeah, it works. See that? That pin goes nowhere after that. Autofocus, you bitch.
Here we go. <laughs> So, we gotta cook it in the oven, eh? The Granny Smith apple right there. Mama's not gonna be too happy. Especially <laughs> when she sees the video. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> she won't know. So tight. guys usually do much with the rocker arms or not really what power level do you usually get to when you kind of want to get into those um it's a lot to do with cam lift and and your springs and the rpm you want to turn um 12 valves aren't but really honestly the, the the stock ones aren't all that bad um the 24 valves run into more issues with the bridges before they run into issues with the rockers It's a custom stainer in there. It's got all the, uh, it's got a balloon plate in there. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it's got, it's actually got HD, it's Torrington bearings in there instead of thrust washers and shit. That's ATF, right? Yeah, I think it is. I wasn't paying yeah. attention. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> like, wait a minute, now you got me questioning it. Which Amsoil is that now? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the hot chip when you need it? All right. Uh, that's what we needed the coal for, damn it. So this is like the most important part here. <laughs> Wouldn't you say? Can't be. Yeah. I saw, I had a buddy who put on his torque converter, he bolted to the motor first. Oh, no, God, no. You have no idea how big of a pet peeve that is when people pull a motor with the torque converter on it still even. Even pulling the motor with the torque converter still connected. Really? That, it can wreck your flex plate. It warps it. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I didn't know that. That's Whoops. A terrible idea. Oh, I hope mine's not warped. <laughs> you just bill it, you know, so. Yeah. That, you know, but like the, the older flex plates, especially like the older um, Chrysler flex plates mm -hmm. that didn't have a ring gear on them, so they weren't very rigid, you can warp the shit out of them things by pulling the motor with the torque converter still on it. Hmm. Terrible idea. Uh, yeah, and you, and you never pull your motor. Up to the tra or transmission up to the motor by the bolts. center we can actually probably use this notch and build what oh yeah just build a, a tab. tab off of that guy <clears throat> let's get her on the nose of the crank she'll sit there and we can spin it to line up the bolts which are lined up fluid damper is pretty much the only thing that people run on these for 
performance, uh, it seems like, isn't it? Yeah, there's an ATI damper, too. Um, it's more of a tuned damper. These, the idea is, is that, that silicone viscous fluid takes out harmonics at all RPMs, not just a tuned RPM band. Um, there's a lot of mixed reviews as to who likes to run what, but I, I've had better luck tearing down motors with these and seeing less wear in the main bearings related to harmonics than, than any others. So. All right, so what are you doing here? You just got to set the top dead center so you can put the pump on? Yeah. Inline pumps are the ones with they've got one per cylinder. You get into to really big stuff, and you end up running into um, they uh, they'll run a 12 cylinder P pump with a dual feed on the injectors. And they run a custom cam. Yeah. So they need those. No, they're over here. The new ones? The brand new ones. Things are not light and like I've said before, it takes competition trim, those pumps will take fifty horse or more to run it. You know, this isn't exactly quite that high, but I mean you're still twenty, thirty horse to run this pump. And on top of it, like I say, all the all the vibrations and shit from going down the road. Um, just it wear and tear on that cast aluminum case. Cast aluminum doesn't flex so well. Mm-hmm. So after we got this motor buttoned up and I was rotating the crank to do valve lash, I noticed that the valves are actually hitting the pistons because the cam was too large for dropping without valve release cutting the pistons. So um, I ordered this cam and it was supposed to be a drop in with no valve reliefs needed and it ends up that the cam grind is actually incorrect. Now I'm not going to say who the cam is from. Um, simply because I'm not out there to ruin people's reputations for a mistake. He did make it right and gave me my money back, but now what I have to do... Sorry about the mess. My sister crashed my parents' truck, so I'm trying to fix that for him. It's a disaster in here. But now what I got is a different cam, which is proven to be proper. Uh, I kind of gave the other guy a chance and he kind of fell on his face. So, um, this is a Hamilton drop-in cam, 188-220. Uh, billet steel cam and then in here is the new tappets from Hamilton cams It's also a retainer in the box here somewhere Because when you put in a new cam in a diesel just like putting a new cam in a gasser with uh, flat tappets You want to put in new lifters basically a tappet is a lifter um, And that's what the cam lobes right on to push the push rods so there's that, and the last guy actually told me I didn't need new tappets, which was incorrect as hell. Uh, you have to put in new tappets when you put in a new cam. So, uh, like I said, that's a big setback. Now I gotta pull the motor apart and put in this new cam. And I will not say, or I'm not gonna say in video who the other cam was from, but if you need to know, or if you're shopping around, feel free to ask me. So if you're in need of any cam stuff, uh, Hamilton is really the 12-valve uh, Cummins leader for cams. Uh, I really liked his pricing too, his, you know, competitive uh, diesel stuff is more expensive, but uh, you can see this retainer here, it's kind of cool, he's got this machined out with his logo, I like that. Um, this cam is also tapped already for the retainer, if you see earlier in the video I showed you us tapping the cam that the other guy sent, because he doesn't send them tap for retainer, which is also somewhat ridiculous, but 
there's that. Um, put it in, show you guys how it runs in a later episode. And that's that. I wanted to tell you what's up and why it's not running yet. Thanks for watching, guys. Feel free to subscribe. Uh, in later videos, you'll see this grill shell being made, and you'll see a bunch of other goodies. So, thanks for watching. Still too tight? Well, we, we, we popped the fuel heater off the head. <coughs> Whoops. <laughs> oh, I don't need it. <laughs>